Hey free to play gang, welcome back to another video. So for today's video, we are going to take a look at Nyx GX playing this light over here on Twitch and he has an APEP 10 team with a 31 second speed clear. That is insane. Okay, so in comparison to me, I currently have mine at somewhere I think I believe is about 41 seconds and that's the fastest time I've ever done on APEP and I will never ever go anywhere lower than this, not with the team that I'm running right now. But the thing is, he is not even using something similar to mine. He's using something very, very different and in fact, if you can notice over here there is a tongue shed and there is also a brin which is mind-blowingly insane so without further ado let's check out the run and i have some notes as well because i've talked to him a little bit and he has given me a little bit of advice on how this team works as well so without further ado let's take a look Perfect. That was perfect. Insane. Insane. 31 seconds, dude. Insane. This is extremely crazy, dude. I will never ever come close to that. Not with the experts that I'm using. And I'm using like super broken, like, okay, not, not really super broken, but I'm using really, really, really top tier uh, four star experts, right? And he's only using three stars and a bunch of, like, I don't know, Tang Xuan, right? An expert that I shit on all the time. And the thing is, he's working over here. So let's try to understand exactly why it's happening over here so that we know exactly why the experts are used over here. Now, the thing is, Tang Xuan, he is used here mainly for damage purposes even though okay the damage is not going to be as insane as Lilin can do but for the second wave it's going to be a little bit important that his damage is slightly under control and we will take a look at that so at the start right Tang Xuan is helping out with the wave clearing right he's doing his AoE attack over here which clears the wave fantastic so one shot the wave is done and then now moving on to the second wave this is where his uh, small AoE attack is going to come in a little bit handy so you see uh, Lin Xiao actually weakens the, the enemy a little bit by a lucky crit by the way. This is a lucky crit. But the thing is, I think with or without the crit, it doesn't really matter all that much because the Tang Xuan here, he's just gonna go for the, the main guy in the middle. And there you go. So he attacks the guy in the middle, drops him by about 12,000 HP, and he attacks the rest, which kind of like weakens the main target and that allows Drew to do his cleave. So as you can see over here, Bam, bam, bam. So the thing is, in order for Drew to have his AI work intelligently over here, a few things need to happen, right? So for the first wave, Drew needs to not move, which is exactly what Tang Xuan is doing over here by doing an AoE attack. That's something that Liling can do as well, okay? So both Tang Xuan and Liling, they both have an attack lead, so they are kind of similar in that sense. And Liling is always going to drop his AoE first, so for the first wave, that's kind of like the same. And for the second wave, I feel like Liling is going to work as well, and I think Liling can probably do a better job in case your Lin Xiao fails to crit, so your Liling can actually lower the main guy's HP a little bit more, and therefore your Drew can do the cleave and all that. So that, that's what I Think. But obviously a Liling can do an insane amount of damage and take out the guy in the middle and therefore you know your Drew stops being able to use his third skill something like that so that could break the combo entirely. And finally on the boss wave itself this is where okay so Tang Shen does a little bit more damage after Lin Xiao lands a defense break right so if you take a look at this defense break and here comes a shattering dream for about 20,000 damage. It's like I said, it's not much, right? I'm sure your Liling can do a lot more than that. But that is enough damage to weaken Apex so that, you know, you can land your chain combos and then finish off the boss just like that. But do take note that uh, one thing that he is using over here is a lot of single target damage, right? So for example, see, single hit, single hit, uh, except for his Tang Shen who did a double hit, but Lin Xiao also single hit, and Brin as well. She's dealing a single hit here. And finally, another single hit. So all in all, uh... If everything lands, if all the debuff lands, Apep is not going to counter-attack with his passive. So that's an important thing. But let's say Lin Xiao's defense break fails to land, it's not so much of a problem in my opinion because Drew is going to try to defense break. Your Tang Xuan is also going to try to defense break, although it's uh, a much lower chance. And finally, of course, if all else fails, your Brin will still come in to land a defense break as well. Another thing I noticed is that his relics are not exactly that insane. So for example, his Charmers, how much damage did he do? I believe he only did about 90 something thousand right let's take a look at that again here okay go pulse 96,000 damage this is not even nearly as strong as like some of the best charmers out there so he does not even have really strong relics and yet he's still able to perform as such so that's pretty crazy and honestly the speed tuning is perfect so for example like let's take a look at Brin over here right so she's gonna go first she's gonna start off with an attack buff at the start and this would allow us to cleave the first wave that makes a lot of sense but at the second wave 
she's actually not going to use her attack buff anymore because it's on cooldown. So as you can see, what she does instead is lower the HP of the target enemies, which is like the, the middle boss over here. So not only does this conserve your cooldown for the boss wave, this also allows you to perform your second wave with a lot more efficiency. Okay, so some notes that I have uh, from Nyx himself. So the success rate is about 80 to 90%, which is it's not very high, but honestly, it's really good for the speed that he has. So a lot of you guys like to say that, you know, speed doesn't really matter all that much because you have a limited amount of stamina. Yes, I agree. Uh, speed is not so important, especially if you probably only refill like once a day, right? But the thing is, if you're going to refill upwards of 10 times a day, or maybe even more if you have saved up stamina packs, or maybe if you're approaching like a weekend event with a 1.5 times relic drop rate, the speed matters a lot because for several reasons. Number one, you do not want to keep your phone on for such a long period of time that's going to burn your phone and it's going to burn your battery like crazy. And number two, I don't think it's really good for your sanity if you're just like, you know, keeping your phone active for the whole time, right? You're completely, you know, denying yourself of like using your, your device for anything. I mean, obviously, Obviously, I'm, I'm using blue stacks to play, which is really helpful in my opinion. But still, at the same time, I do feel that, you know, having a very fast team is very, very important. So a success rate of 80 to 90% is, in my opinion, still okay. You are foregoing about 1 to 2 stamina for every multi, which I think is still fine. And secondly, there are defense breaks on 4 of the Espers. So over here, your Lin Xiao has defense break, your Tang Xuan has a defense break as well, your Drew has defense break, and your Brin has defense break. Only your Charmers do not have defense break, which is quite important in like trying to ensure that, you know, your runs, you know, even though you do not hit 31 seconds all the time, you at least try to minimize the time needed. Now, thirdly, what's very important is that the defense break needs to land before Charmers moves because, well, for obvious reasons. So ideally, you want your Charmers to be the slowest Esper on this team and with a minimum of 100 speed because Apep himself has 100 base speed. And finally, he also mentioned something that I can fully agree on. So he said that the run can be a lot more consistent with Adamantine on the Espers, especially if, let's say, you fail to land a defense break and you need to tank the boss uh, counter-attack and all that, right? So you definitely need Adamantine in order to ensure that your win rate is slightly higher. And this is the exact same reason why my Lui is also on Adamantine even though you know ideally he should be on something else right so like for example my Lui over here he is running Adamantine relics and a lot of people ask me like why this is the case you know like why are you not running like fiery so that you can you know generate stats elsewhere or like maybe cap out my crit rate as well because it's stuck at 90% so this is the exact same reason right I need an Adamantine over here so that my runs are a little bit more consistent so unfortunately I do not have the stats of his account I do not have the stats of all of his aspers over here but hopefully he would be able to showcase his relics on a twitch stream so I'll put his link down in the descriptions below and in a pinned comment as well you can go ahead and check out his twitch account and if you found that this video was helpful for you don't forget to hit the follow button on his twitch channel and i'm sure there is a lot more that you can learn from him that you will not be able to acquire from my channel because i do not even build some of the experts that he has and i think that's amazing and i feel like this is true content creating like whatever that he's doing over here playing around with experts that people don't really talk about people don't really care about and like using Brin for example as an expert who carries an attack buff and at the same time has defense breaks and a decent deep on her third skill, I think that's pretty interesting in my opinion and I think he did a really good job. So that's it for the video guys, hopefully you enjoyed it, if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up, it really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now this has been Daddy Free to Play and as always I will see you in the next video.